Ciao a tutti and welcome to Venice Talks, a podcast series about Venice in Italy. My name is Monica Cesarato and I am a Venetian food and travel blogger. I'm going to put my insider knowledge at your disposal to help you discover Venice at 360 degrees. Each week I will be chatting to the people who really matter, the Venetian. So follow me on the discovery of his artisans, writers, fashion designers, artists, glass makers, bloggers and much much more. Come to visit Venice the right and sustainable way. You can find me on my blog www.monicacesarato.com and also on all social media. Enjoy the episode! Welcome to Venice Talks, episode number 15. Hi everyone, welcome back to Venice Talks. Today I'm very happy because I got a very good friend of mine chatting here with me. She's one of the best guys uh, from Venice. Uh, she's an amazing person. She's very fashionable, uh, like all my guys' friends. And here I am talking to Monica Gambarotto. Ciao, Monica. How are you? Hi, ciao. Ciao, Monica. I'm really fine. Thank you. What very- about you? Very busy and assume so are you. Are you? This month has been crazy for everybody, I think, right? Um, yes, luckily enough, it's been a good month and a fairly good season, I should say, after, you know, two years of not of, working. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about you first. How long have you been a tourist guide in Venice? For a very long time. 25 years this year. Oh, my year. God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, so sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. So what did you start? You were about 10 then? Oh, a little <laughs> bit older than 10 because uh, I'm now, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, 25. No. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm 36. So oh, I was okay. no, yeah, just yeah. joking. But no, I was very young. I, yeah, I was really, really young. Just right after university, I took the exam. Okay. But, um, tourist guides uh, were supposed to uh, to take uh, back then uh, to become a professional guide mm-hmm. in Venice. And so uh, right after university, I started working as a uh, tourist guide. Mm-hmm. And what languages do you cover? Um, of course, I speak Italian and uh, English and yep. Russian, which was my major at university. All right. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. Now, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you, because I've already talked to Luisella, talked to to Luisella that you know very well as well. Very well. Um, Since you're both part of the same association that is Best Venice Guys, right? Exactly. Um, Okay. But I wanted to talk to you because uh, you do something very particular and I don't know if you were the first one to do these kind of tours but you definitely are, are the most well known about it you um, kind of um, specialized in doing tours for children right yes and I put correct. an s where I shouldn't have put it just, just now my uh, English no. is children children <laughs> <laughs> yes um, I, uh, I've always been doing this actually since when uh, I started because, uh, you know, the year after I became a guide, I had my uh, first uh, child and then my second and third chi- children were uh, born. And so uh, uh, working with them, with their friends, I've always doing, uh, I've always been doing this uh, and uh, um, also with uh, guests coming from all over the world. It's just that I would not really advertise this, you know, it was like, uh, um, uh, customized uh, to mm-hmm. the uh, uh, families that I worked with but then eventually I decided that that had to be known by everybody that you know mm-hmm. I was eager to work with children because mm-hmm. uh, it's not that easy after oh all. no it takes a lot of energy oh my god doesn't but- it I, I mean I, I got to say guys I took part in one of our tours <laughs> and I at the end of the tour I was exhausted uh, and I was just you know, going along with her, is a st- they are children, they are exhausting. And I did give birth to two, so I know. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, it is, um, it is true, but it's, you know, uh, if you uh, really try hard and you put a lot of effort, a lot of energy in this, uh, um, children actually listen to you. If you just, you know, if it is actually the same for you if you don't show enthusiasm uh, they cannot mm-hmm. follow you with enthusiasm yes. and i really have this enthusiasm it's not that oh, i'm gosh. faking it you're <laughs> ve- no 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 you, you, you do you're very passionate and you're very entertaining 
anyway uh, when you explain things and I've seen you with the kids you're even more so so yeah definitely uh, I think as an adult as well when uh, when they come in your tour the children are captivated by even the adults because uh, you, you get into it so much yeah you know what Monica um I started thinking that I was not the first one actually that advertised such tours. There were other great colleagues of mine, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but my idea is that it's not only tours for children, it's a tours for family. Because what mm. I like to do is to involve their parents as well, or the adults they come with uh, as well. So that, you know, sometimes uh, there are families that come on only that once in their lifetime yeah. to Venice. And so, yes, they want the children to be entertained, but they also want to explore something for themselves, you know, mm -hmm. for the adults. And so it's a way for the whole family to get to know something and to cooperate in solving puzzles and riddles and, you know, lots mm -hmm. of little different games. Um, and yeah, I because, out... uh, because I think, I don't know if I'm saying this wrong, but your tours are more or less like the one that I took part that it was like a treasure yes, hunt in a way yes okay yeah. so no, all yeah. of them are like that okay yes so all the tours are some sort of a uh treasure hunt basically mm -hmm. um you know you find the next step by solving some puzzles um some um, crosswords uh, something like that so you can go from one step to the other one mm -hmm. um, and so you find your way towards the end of the tour so all my tours most of my tours are like that and then of course, it depends on the age of the of children, because I have a tours, uh, different tours for different children, of course. So how lo how young uh, was the youngest uh, you take on a tour when you three do years kind old, of, three years old? Yeah, yeah, because it got to have uh, some kind of interaction. Uh, yeah, uh, especially understand um, the pictures and stuff yes, that you show them, right? Yes. Okay. Well, I've had younger children, but they were along with their brothers or sisters. Yeah, of course, um, of course. Yeah. So of course, three, course. I think three, three and a half is the minimum for some sort of an interaction. Yeah. I, I like it the way you did it uh, because uh, you know when we did it, we did it in Samar Square, and I don't know that much. I got, I, I got to be honest because I'm not a tourist guide, so I know about St. Mark's Square, what I read and what I've heard, but I didn't study like you guys, mm -hmm. uh, guides, guys, guides <laughs> do. Uh, and it was so interesting to find so many fun facts about the, 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 the square uh, with the eyes of the children and by having to look for the little details that... Uh, you know, I've been thousands of times in the square. I never oh, even yeah. thought about it. That was so cool. I love that. Yeah, I because uh, children are, as far as I understand, um, as I figured out, actually, children are really into details. Uh, they like to pay attention to the little things. Um, you know, sometimes during tours, just regular tours, uh, you know, with mostly mm -hmm. adults, it happens that you have some children and they ask you the scariest questions, you mm, know, taking yeah. a look at details that maybe you hadn't paid attention to yeah, in of the course. past. And so I think it's a very good way to engage them, mm -hmm. uh, taking a look at details. And then, you know, in a place like Venice, every single detail, detail carries along some stories or some legends or some facts mm -hmm. that are really interesting for everybody after all. Mm -hmm. So at the moment uh, I was uh, watching the news coming out of Venice, you actually got two particular uh, tours coming out. Well, you've been doing it for a while, but uh, for the month of November, you kind of uh, bringing them to the attention of everybody. And they are in collaboration with a great uh, Italian uh, Venetian writer, Alberto Tosofei. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about it? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, um, in November, um, Alberto, together with other uh, people that he works with, uh, organizes uh, the uh, Mystery Tour, Venice Mystery Tour. Um, and I happen to be uh, cooperating with him, with him as well. Um, last year, um, the tour that I gave was uh, mostly about mystery, and it was mm -hmm. uh, mainly for adults and teenagers. But this year, I have decided to focus on still mysteries and legends and weird facts about mm -hmm. Venice, but for a younger uh, public, oh, yes. so for children aged age 12 uh, cool. with their uh, uh, yeah with their families, of course. I need and I need uh, to go I need to go and rent a kid. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> so get comfortable. Why not? Please. Why not? <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, you know, uh, Venice is some sort of a Gothic city, not only mm -hmm. from the point of view of the architecture, but also from the out point of view of the atmosphere, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, so uh, spooky sometimes in the darkness and so mysterious some other times uh, and full of legends and stories of uh, past centuries, but even more recent ones, uh, that, uh, we will discover, you know, during mm. the and summer. then we still, this tour that you're going to be doing in November is going to be available in any case uh, from oh, US. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Know, it's just a, that, it, yeah, yeah, it is true. I mean, it's a part of the tours that I give normally. It's uh -huh. just that I thought that it would fit for uh, yes. Alberto Tosofei's mystery tour. Oh, yeah, and of course. So that's and why I proposed it. How long does it last a tour and how many people can join? Okay, all my tours last from like, like one and a half hours to two hours, depending okay. on the amount of people that we have, the age of the children, how many mm -hmm. children, how many adults. But it's like a hour, an hour and a half, two hours at most. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, how many people can be in a, in a tour like this? Um, normally, the best would be for families. Mm -hmm. In case uh, it's a group tour like this one's going to be, um, at most a few 15 uh, at okay. up to 20 people because I really want to take care of all the children and I, I want to know all their names uh, mm -hmm. you know just to get in touch to every single kid if mm -hmm. you have like 12 or 13 kids it's yeah. like impossible yeah. only yeah. two hours uh. so let's say in this occasion it's gonna be a big numbers but if you were doing it for a job uh, you know for your job for your own people usually is for yeah, families one, one two say. families yeah two one two yeah. family yeah yeah that's nice that was very nice and do you usually i mean i'm not gonna ask you exactly where you're going to so, but at least an idea do you, uh, how many sestiere uh, districts of venice do you usually cover Okay, this particular tour, uh, you, you mean in this particular tour, the mystery? Uh, right? And even the one in general that you do. Oh, so in just general. In, yeah, yeah, in general. Um, I cover basically all the sestieres, uh, all the uh, um, districts of Venice. Si, si, no, but I meant, uh, I meant with a mystery tour. Usually. Oh, the mystery tour starts in San, San Marco, in St. Mark's, okay. and uh, finishes in Castello. Ah, so okay, so, yeah, so it's so mainly it's Castel nice and San Marco. Um, That's where they were more naughty. <laughs> yeah, most of the uh, yeah the like uh, mystery uh, yeah. legends uh, are in there. So okay. there is plenty of material. <laughs> yeah, and then I saw also another tour, always with Alberto. Uh, that is with Leo. Who is Leo? First of all. Oh yeah, this is another project that is coming up. Uh, of course, uh, all these um, uh, cooperations with Alberto Tosofei uh, were born within the association that yeah, I'm of part course. of, a Best Friends Guides, uh, right? So uh, I'm not the only one. I'm just yeah, yeah, pressing this because uh, I mean to give honor also to my colleagues. Of course. Um, the other tour that I have organized, uh, but this will come out a little bit later, will be with Leo. Leo is a big cat that was born out of the fantasy of Alberto Tosofei. So Gosh. Now, wrote... I, need, I need to get Alberto on the show. I really need to come on the podcast and squeeze him out. Oh, for all we of probably his... should. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I do need to find. I need to find one day when he's not, uh, uh, you know, busy. That is literally Oh, uh, okay. At the moment with the mystery tour, he's really busy. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I will never dare to ask him now anyways. No, while. just hold on and maybe uh, he'll find some time yeah. for you. I, I hope he will. Um, so so he, spoke of, of Le he came up with his idea of Leo. Yeah, cat. he wrote this uh, booklet um, about Leo that saves Venice. Leo is a big cat um, that uh, um, is uh, really concerned with the destiny of Venice, you know, mm -hmm. with the uh, um, problems that Venice is facing from over to reason to uh, um, people that uh, throw garbage everywhere, also into the water, but also with uh, natural problems so like uh, uh, the, 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 the high tides that are becoming mm -hmm. higher and higher, you know, the uh, mm -hmm. aqua alta, as we say uh, in Venice, the high water. Um, so uh, um, he, um, Alberto uh, writes uh, about uh, uh, Leo's adventures as he tries uh, to do 
everything he can to save Venice from all this. I'm not going to tell too much so that, of course, the book. I mean, everybody can get the book and read about it. Yeah, you got to give like just a little hint, a little preview, that way people then get uh, curious and have a buy the book or even better or even better they buy the book and then they come and do the tour oh yeah that would be just great uh, uh, because of the uh, uh, the book is really interesting to read Uh, the tour as I uh, thought about it uh, is uh, what can we do with Leo to save Venice and in fact the title is let's save Venice with Leo Mm. and I think it's really important it gets the children closer to the real problems uh, that Venice faces uh, you know Mm -hmm. and uh, it makes them aware of the problems that Venice has, but also of the problems that other cities can face. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's one other reason why I like to work with children. Mm. Because, you know, maybe I'm exaggerating my role, I don't know. But I like to think that I can try at least to create awareness. Of course. No, Um, no, you're not exaggerating. The future is the next generation. We we keep forgetting that. We keep living, I think, as the problem is that we we are so selfish at the moment that we think we count, but we don't. It's the next generation, the people who really count. And we're leaving so many problems to the next generation. Oh, gosh, I feel so sorry for them. Oh, yeah. Um, now, another uh, kind of tour that you offer, and uh, I, I couldn't think of anybody better than you and Luisella, because I know Luisella does it as well, is a tour of the artisans. Mm-hmm. The reason why I say I couldn't think of anybody better than you and Luisella is because you both don't just take the people around to visit the artisans, but you actually probably buy all the products from the artisans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think- uh, you two on your own are sustaining the artisan economy of Venice. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, yeah, well, on the in the first place, uh, I really like what Venetian artisans uh, uh, produce. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of the uh, things that they do are just amazing um and so uh that's how i got in touch with a whole lot of artisans mm-hmm. in venice by buying stuff yes and, you know um again it's not a matter to uh, tell people what they can buy where it's just to make them aware that yes. to produce something <laughs> it, it i mean by hand it mm. takes so much effort and so many skills yes. that people don't think about so well my, my yeah. next book uh, uh one of the two because i got commissioned two books one of the next books is will be about the artists of venice mm-hmm. and the reason why well, you know because we talk, talk about these things <laughs> yes. all the time one of the reason why i wanted to do this book it was in a way uh for me it was because i wanted to give back something to all the artisans that i met all through the years and they gave me so much not just in terms of uh, you know, obviously of things that I bought or they gave me very kindly as presents, but also in terms of their time, um, the knowledge that they shared with me, uh, oh, they, yes. when they're explaining things, th- their time that is is important. My God, if they were talking to me, they weren't doing something else that they could have. It is. Uh, so, and uh, as Marisa pointed out, Marisa Convento, uh, you know, of Imperialista, oh, yes. <laughs> which uh, I spoke on the first episode of the podcast, just in case, guys, you haven't heard it, you need to go back and listen to it. Um, she made me notice something as well. Um, a book on the artisan hasn't been written yet, in total, for a long, long time. And she said to me, it's about time we need to put down on the 21st century, which artisans are still alive and kicking in Venice, which arts are still alive and kicking. And I think the problem is uh, that in Venice, uh, a lot of tourists don't realize how important the artisans and the guilds were in the society of Venice. Oh, yeah. You know, being a guide, uh, there's... I have the possibility of uh, explaining a little bit about this. Uh, and so you see the artisans, I mean, you, you learn a little bit about the artisans of the past and you see, you see the artisans of today, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I normally repeat that, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I really feel that uh, uh, with the decreasing of the population of Venice and all the problems that Venice has, artisans will probably be those uh, people that will save Venice from the point of view of the 
people living and working there, you know. Mm -hmm. They're still active uh, in the economical system and in the social system of Venice. It's so important to me. Um, And uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, what I, uh, uh, the way I, try to uh, get myself closer mm-hmm. in, 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 a, in touch with the uh, artisans and also I try to get my uh, guests closer to the artisans is by trying their workshops uh, if they carry out workshops for mm-hmm. example mm-hmm. yes so uh, uh, this is really important so uh, it's not just a matter of uh, uh, it is also it can be a matter of buying a piece of art sometimes produced Mm -hmm. by the hands of the local artisans but if you try yourself to do it oh my god you appreciate it oh my god do you it's not always possible right you know that perfectly so i cannot say that everybody can try to 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 build a gondola wow or go (laughs) and beat or go and beat gold Oh, right, but, yeah, you know. but there are certain workshops that you do. I mean, like uh, uh, the first time I did uh, with Alessia Fuga again, num- uh, episode okay. number two of a podcast. Okay. okay, the first time I did with her trying to make a glass bead. Oh my god, I was sore, my jaws were sore. Oh, for yeah, three days, but not because I had to do anything with my jaws, it's just from the tension and clenching, and you know, oh, yes, oh, oh yes. Because, well, I, as you know, I did it myself with yeah. one of my children. We uh, created two beads uh, that look like uh, awkward. Uh, <laughs> hey, um, at least uh, you got it. At least you got uh, it I back. I forget the name. Because, uh, Lisa, Lisa, yeah, at least you got one because Alessia hid mine and is never seen the light. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm okay? so sorry. <laughs> So I'm bad. so sorry. How do you say gufo in English? I forget. Owl. 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 Okay. Sorry. I was just, uh, you know. Uh, so my son and I uh, created two owls. We'll see, have them. Uh, so, I mean, sort of owls, yes. uh, right? Yeah, but, um, ben, but you do not. But as, you realize- at least we have them. Uh, but, you know, so many other things. And uh, it's not going, I mean, you're not going to learn how to do that because it takes uh, lots of skills, years and years of pra- practice. Of course. Uh, but, you know, at least you get in touch with the materials, uh, with, yes. a pr- with a pre- proceeding uh, to, uh, to create uh, such, uh, such objects. And yeah. I think it's so important uh, for the guests, uh, but also for the locals uh, to understand yeah. this. Because the only thing that you hear, oh, but that's so expensive, you know. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, but <laughs> you try to make it. It's only I think when you try, you actually realize the value of the skill of these people that have been doing it for exactly. years and years and years, the time they take them, uh, the time that they give you explain it. We see like another thing that uh, is a kind of in a way I feel is my fault in a way I'm one of the people that made this possible as a years because for years I kept saying to people go inside the artisan shops and ask questions but yeah, like but... all things people <laughs> ever taken you know you just go and say ask questions and the underlying was uh, maybe buy something and now what people only do is they walk in ask questions and, and walk, walk out, out again uh, exactly. and ask questions it's not like or oh, maybe a five minutes questions people will stay there like an hour two hours taking away time from no the of artisan. course uh, of course so uh, what we what we're saying to the people listening is that yes walk into an artisan yes spend time with them to understand what they're doing but do not walk out empty-handed please yeah, or, you know, maybe, you know, it depends on the guests that you have. Sometimes uh, they can buy only one particular thing and you show them so many different uh, workshops, for example. Of course. Uh, but um, just, you know, a little bit of time in each place and then they can choose uh, what they would like to uh, to purchase. So in order not to take too much work away from the artisans, because when they're in their workshops, uh, these artisans work. <laughs> so of course. if you spend an hour with them talking, they're not working. Working for one exactly. hour, right? Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. So and, uh, it, since it we is got a matter of respect. Let me let me use you as a guide for a second. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> since you you're can. here for free. 
<laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> no, no. I just want to explain. I want you to explain if you can, because I don't feel I have uh, the, 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 the knowledge yet. Uh, I'm studying. Okay. Uh -huh. um, I just uh, how important is the roles of artisans and guilds uh, in the history of Venice? major importance of course uh, um, of course the guilds were important all throughout uh, Italy in the Middle Ages uh, right mm -hmm. um, as the cities were growing larger people were coming from the uh, uh, countryside into the cities and so of course the society had to be organized and likewise it was the same in Venice with uh, um, one major element though that these uh, guilds uh, these are uh, associations uh, were very important from a social point of view mm -hmm. so uh, one of their most important roles uh, was uh, to help each other out mm -hmm. and also to help the poor help those that maybe were sick and could not work uh, for the moment uh, help the families of those workers that had died uh, leaving so many children yeah uh, they were so little and so supporting the families of the other members of the guilds and uh, there were were so many such guilds uh, and uh, they uh, survived uh, almost all of them up till the end uh, of the Venetian Republic up till mm -hmm. 1797. Some uh, of them are still still exist nowadays. Um, some of them not, still exist. They're not guilds as such but they still a uh, kind yeah. of uh, you know yeah. still but we're talking alive. about uh, we're talking about uh, those that were mainly dedicated to a saint like Saint Rocks, uh, uh, for example, San Giovanni Evangelista, Saint John the Evangelist. Um, but those were not born as a trading guilds, uh, not born no, no, as but for yeah. example, you got the uh, Cal uh, Calafateri and um Calafati, yes. Uh see, yes, see there the are still some uh, yeah, th they are a little bit different today because we have oh, yeah, of ass assistant from the state. Yeah, yeah. but what I'm saying some is still of some of them, I know, I, I realize they're totally different from what they used to be, but some of them, they oh, were yeah, but the name remains century. and the yeah. idea, the identity yeah. remains. Yeah, it is true. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is true. But, um, uh, so as I was saying, um, the society really uh, relied on such uh, uh, organizations, mm -hmm. uh, um, more so in a place like Venice. Uh, in Venice, uh, most of the population would be uh, merchants or artisans. Well, of course, there would be the servants, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, the peasants, uh, those dedicated to agriculture, very low class, uh, right? Uh, um, mm -hmm that was common all throughout uh, all throughout Europe it was uh, absent um, so uh, these uh, these artisans uh, these uh, uh, merchants would try really to uh, join and to preserve their uh, um, um, their arts uh, their activities uh, um, so in a sense, uh, these uh, um, guilds uh, would uh, um, be a very, a very important part of uh, both of the economical and the social uh, mm -hmm. situation of Venice. And um, yeah. I think, well, and uh, also, I, they, 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 and only, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I, I lost you. Uh, no, I was saying, and they were also important because they maintained standards. It was all, apart from a social point of view, they're looking after people and, uh, you know, making sure everybody was, uh, you know, uh, if they had, uh, yes, you know. Yes, exactly. The standards uh, were very important uh, in the Venetian uh, in the Venetian period in the Venetian society, um, in particular for those uh, artisans producing luxury goods. Yes, <laughs> that was necessary because it is true that the Venetian uh, the Venetian merchants uh, would import uh, from faraway countries important uh, um, precious uh, goods like silk, spices, or something like that. But it's also true that uh, the Venetians would produce a whole lot of luxury goods uh, mm -hmm. that would. Uh, be purchased by all Europeans at the Rialto market. Of course. So it was important to maintain the standards. standards. The and I think that's what characterizes the artisans still today of Venice. And that's because, it. Uh, that, so, that, that carried on through the centuries. Is this attention to the detail, this attention to the standards, to the quality, and the quality of what is produced? So when I was saying before, you know, sometimes people look at the price and say, okay, wait, but it's really expensive. Yeah, first of all, try to do it yourself try to see how what it takes yeah. to make it the second just 
consider that uh, the materials, the raw materials that these artisans are using are of mm -hmm. excellent quality, mm -hmm. the best quality. And of course, that costs more than just uh, simple stuff that you buy everywhere, right? Of course. Of so course. Uh, quality is also one very important issue of the Venetian artisans. Uh, and that's why I'm buying, uh, as we were saying before, you know, uh, what I can from the local artisans. And by the way, you know, if yeah. you uh, tell people, you know, this artisan is really good for this and this, that other artisan you said is um, creates a such and such. Um, if you're wearing something or yes. if you're carrying something they can that was see. produced in that very same workshop, I mean, it's not hard to believe what you're saying <laughs> well you're doing exactly what the merchants used to do hundreds of years ago you oh, are have showing <laughs> merchandise that's what we are doing so in a way it's exactly the same thing but it, there is nothing there is no better way than to um support the artisans i think as yeah. uh, just you know this way by showing things it is true um, you know what it's not only a matter of business anyway it's uh, something that i really believe in yeah yeah it's pride yeah. as well yeah, yeah. yeah no no i totally agree i you know no like like thing, you like all yeah. of us there are so much yeah. into the yeah. artisan world yeah yeah and it's it's incredible because when i start put down the names of the people that i want to go on the book and i thought i will have like 20 25 i'm already on 60 and i haven't stopped yet oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like oh my god do, do i know so many people oh, 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 is yes, there? oh gosh i thought i didn't realize there's so many and there oh, are yeah. and it's incredible and some of them are <clears throat> some of them are part of maybe of uh, uh associations so on but some of them are the only ones doing something and these you oh, know yes. the, the last it remaining ones and it's a bit sad you know so um yeah, yeah. so we definitely are monica gambarotto made in venice supporter for sure you <laughs> yeah, are definitely um okay so where can people find you online um i am on instagram and facebook uh, and yeah. uh, the name uh, of uh, my website which is yep. the same as facebook and instagram is guided tours in venice dot com uh if you want that's the name uh, the the address is uh, guided tours in venice dot com okay perfect and then on instagram is guided tours in venice also, exactly. all one word fantastic yep. perfecto okay one last question five if it can come out or oh, any any point you you decide on many for for people coming to venice to behave in the in a respectful way to venice what are the main things that people should do um it depends you know whether they come in group or whether they come uh, alone. no it doesn't matter no no it doesn't matter mm -hmm. becoming group or not the basic things that everybody should do when oh, come basic to things for everybody okay as in see respectful uh, things respectful things uh first of all this is really important because uh, uh, i really have to cope with this uh, every single day is to walk in a single file Good. right uh if you are alone okay that doesn't matter but you keep the right uh, even yes. if you're alone because if you keep zigzagging in between the shops or work like in a family of four all in a yes. row um it becomes yep. difficult for the locals to move around, right? Yep. Second, something that people should really do coming to Venice is to explore Venice away from the touristic areas, mm -hmm. but always, you know, respecting uh, the local uh, um, uh, the local population because sometimes uh, it is interesting to wander around uh, but if people find an open door they enter no. or uh, you know if there no. is a uh, some sort of a fence uh, they get over it yeah no but no, if no. it's private property it's not property <coughs> oh they look into the windows <laughs> but yeah. it's the houses of the locals yeah uh like uh, sometimes i mean we have probably the most beautiful hospital yeah. in Italy for sure maybe in the world I don't know in Venice and people just walk in mm. to take a look um I wouldn't do that I mean yeah there is a museum part that you can enter that at the yeah. hospital but yeah. now you know wandering around taking a look yeah. uh, I mean or or maybe just it's in the not. main entrance because of it is the main entrance everybody is, is, is not literally the first uh, 
20 meters, but then you walk. Oh, out. yeah. But sometimes people, you know, enter from one side and cross the entire, the entire oh. area on the ground floor oh. and walk out from the other side. Oh, this okay. I, I did today, it. I did it, but by mistake because I, I went in through the wrong entrance. <laughs> oh, yeah. But that happens. I mean, uh, it okay. happened that I wanted to go and visit someone at the hospital and I missed it, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it happens. But if you're um, a guest coming to Venice yeah. and you see the word ospedale or the yeah. Yeah, you just oh, don't sure, which yeah. means hospital no matter yeah. where you are yeah. I just wouldn't walk through or like such areas that you where you feel that there are people working living uh Venice is not entirely a museum there are yeah. still people that you know think that their privacy is important yeah of course this is another uh, interesting point that out of experience I think should be uh, should be respected yeah. one other thing yes is to enter those workshops no matter which ones uh, those that are interesting for the guests um where they see people working doing something as as we were saying before not to engage them uh, into conversations of hours uh, yeah but, you know to pay attention and to realize that maybe the best souvenirs <laughs> from venice uh, you don't need it to get 500 souvenirs yeah. just one which will be a little bit more expensive uh but of higher quality and it'll be uh, you know really made in venice by the yeah. hands that you have seen working oh, you know? and i would say also when you walk into the um artisans before you take photos always ask always because ask. Is, the yeah. most of, most of of them will say probably all of them will just say a simple yes go ahead but it's just nice uh, for you know for people to I think, ask you know, because sometimes taking I think a it's photo just, uh, common sense <laughs> yes you know well, to yeah. ask and common sense <laughs> the long right? lost friend <laughs> yeah, so sometimes i even forget about it because uh, taking it uh, as common sense i think that everybody should, should think about it but you're right sometimes uh, you know being away from home uh, uh, everything uh, is uh, becomes a museum even a church you know so mm. one other thing you know respecting venice it also means that to be properly dressed yes. when you enter a holy place yes which could yeah. be uh, a church or the cemetery or yeah. whatever you end up to yeah because uh, i understand that some places like saint mark's uh, basilica can look as museums especially if you're away from home you don't perceive it as a mm -hmm. church you perceive it as a museum but nonetheless it is a holy place and holy places have their own standards uh, as far as yep. clothes are concerned so that's also part okay so sometimes you might not know what is proper but uh, always just ask, ask. Always just ask, ask. Just ask. ask. anyway monica it was so nice talking to you i wish we could talk longer but you know uh this is the times uh, that i we decided to give to the podcast Perfect. and we can find you on Gadi Tours in Venice and I'll see you soon somewhere because um, we always see each other. Definitely. I'm sooner sure or later. sure we'll meet. But uh, <laughs> definitely gonna ask, I uh, definitely want you again to talk about other things uh, relating to Venice, maybe on a duo with Luisella or something like that. Well, why not? And um, yeah, have a great, we can have a, like some kind of question time, you know, what to do and not to do in Venice. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah why not that would yeah, be really nice that, that would be good okay listen Ali it was a pleasure talking to you thank it's you been my so pleasure. much it's been my pleasure Monica thank you so much for having given me this opportunity and uh, you know for being such a good friend which is always <laughs> important um thanks again and Thanks. I would like to say bye bye to everybody. I'll be waiting for everybody in Venice. So come Absolutely. and join me and one of my tours. It'll be a pleasure to have you with me. Okay. Thank you so much. Ciao, Cara. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, 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 Monica. Thank you so much, Monica, for the lovely chat. You can find Monica at guidedtoursinvenice.com and on social media at Guided Tours in Venice. Thank you again for listening. If you want to book a food tour or a cooking experience with me, you can find me on my blog www.monicacesarato.com or at cookingvenice.com and also on all social medias with the handle at Monica Cesarato and at Cooking Venice. Feel free to leave a comment or write to info at monicacesarato.com for more information about the people featured in the podcast or Venice. Bye bye!